Here we are now north of Maradi, about uh, two kilometers north of the main road uh, Maradi to Niamey. And I'm with uh, Adu Husseini, the Secretary Permanent de l'Église Évangélique de République du Niger, and Tony Renato with SIM. And uh, Tony's going to tell us about what we're looking at here, a field uh, basically void, devoid of, of most trees. Tony, can you tell us uh, what we're looking at here? This is the result of uh, what used to be very, very common farming practice for at least the last 20 years in this district. Um, about 20 to 30 years ago, farmers started moving into these northern areas north of Maradi, and uh, it was very heavy bushland that they moved into, and they cleared it basically for farming. Uh, and then every year, when the live tree stumps would send up new suckers, they would slash them again. And so the trees never really got a chance to get up again. And every year they cut them back so that we get what, what we see here now. i just show you, it looks like it's an empty field, but uh, some of these tree stumps are still alive and each year they send up suckers. Like this, so the farmers would let them get up to about a meter by the next year, and then they just slash them again and put them on the ground for fertilizer. So there's no huge tree cover coming up again. Then a little bit later, the project variety to productivity started teaching the far farmers modern farming methods using animal traction and uh, monoculture. And in order to use the oxen drawn plows, they taught them to even pull out the tree stumps and the roots so it wouldn't interfere with the, with the cultivation equipment. That's what you can see here now. Okay, so what we have then is a field that's uh, nice for either animal traction or for even uh, motorized tractor operations but uh, devoid of all trees and open to the violent winds that sometimes blow through here. And also the, temp the soil temperatures get to be very, very hot. Um, for a long time we were trying to teach farmers to plant trees, raise them in a tree nursery and then during the rainy season take them out to the fields in uh, windbreak formation and plant them. But it was always such a discouraging uphill battle. You had to fight the goats if there was a lapse in the rainfall, you'd have to go out and water the trees, you have to protect them from termites and all the rest of it. And when you consider the area that, of Niger under the same uh, pressures of overgrazing and desertification, it just seemed an impossible job. And about the same time we realized that a lot of the trees that they had chopped out of their fields were actually still alive, but they never get a chance to grow up to be mature trees again. And uh, so we started teaching the farmers to encourage the growth of these trees, perhaps up to 40 per hectare. And instead of leaving all these shoots to come up, instead of leaving them all to come up and slash them each year, to select three or four good ones, the tallest and straightest ones, and cut out the rest. And uh, from within them, they could harvest their needs, but still leave one to come up and be strong. So we'll see that a little bit later. Yeah, further up north as we get it more into our area. Okay, thank you, Tony. Here we are a few kilometers further north on this same road, and again we're back with Tony and one of the farmers that have has participated in this project that has been going on for some years with SIM. Tony, give a little uh, introduction to what we're seeing now. We got a lot more uh, trees in the field. Some would say that this is a, a dirty field, but uh, tell us uh, what we're looking at here. Well, first, this is Salel Kaso, and we're standing in his farm. It's a farmer from Garamboy, just north of Maradi. And uh, he started putting into practice some of the things that we've been teaching them about natural regeneration, regeneration leaving the trees come up in their fields. Okay, and uh, then let's have, uh, what's his name again? Salal. Salal. So, chicken karkalum, oh, oh, yeah. Gaskiamana karangadeshi, quarry. 
today, hey. today we're starting to see the benefits of leaving these trees, but when the project first started teaching us about them, we really didn't know why we should leave trees in our fields. But now, as we go through uh, from village to village, we can see the benefits. Always short of firewood, and they had to go long distances to get them. But now they're very, very thankful because through this program, there's always something for their cooking fires. In the past, if somebody wanted to fix up their compound or do repairs to their house, uh, usually they wouldn't have wood of their own, so they would have to go to somebody else's farm and steal it or take it. But now each person can go to his own farm, he can take what he wants, and there'll be no no accusations, no stealing involved. I, I asked him about the benefit to the crop, and uh, he said uh, through the leaf fall onto the ground, this becomes fertilizer for the plants, and they can see the difference in their millet crops, where they're closer to the trees, they can see the improvement. Nago um Sama Ida Gaskia Suma Hakani Kumanago uh Dogo Kurea Gaskia Suma Hakana Kone Yavan Chakia Amsa Pare Nago Tuza Suma Sumban Chakia Amsa Pare. During the time of the Food for Work program, Sada was a volunteer and uh, he supervised over seven villages teaching them the principles of how, how to do this uh, natural regeneration work. And recently he's been back to these villages asking people uh, about the benefits of the trees, was it worth it? And he's very, very pleased to find that in most cases the people are not only uh, following his instructions, but uh, they see the benefits, they're realizing the benefits. Uh, when I went to the village of Kuntaru, uh, the way they, they understood the work and they answered my questions really showed that they'd uh, come a long way from where they were and I'm thankful uh, for their response and also thankful to to uh, the project for the things that they've taught me. Uh, akwe nambuti, ito maa nagota. Gaskia, kade aiki alhamdulillah, mwenji dati, parai. Whichever village I go into, I can really see the differences now compared to what it used to be. So, something that I'd like to add also is an unexpected benefit of this program. Uh, many tree species that we did not know even existed in this area uh, are coming back. Uh -huh. they're, maybe their leaves are very edible or they have a fruit but they've been chopped out and we haven't seen them for years but now very slowly we're seeing that through this program either the live tree stumps of these trees or perhaps from seeds they're starting to reappear on, on the, uh, in the landscape. Uh -huh. Okay, now if uh, Suleiman could uh, explain to us exactly how he goes about managing his his trees. I see this tree has is oh what uh, almost a couple meters tall and then there's some small growth undergrowth below it. What exactly is going on here? Uh, in one year, Gilma, or I. Yet Gilma, so says, I know Kumasuma, Sundio, she sing your summer. To Anna, I own one done and she can answer that they be on guy, you know what, and the Kumasun touch. I want this tree to grow up to a reasonable size to harvest it, but I, I don't want to leave the place uh, bare. So, out of these younger ones coming up still, I'm going to leave five, select five of the best ones to come up and replace this, and in that way, I'll always have something to harvest. 